In this video, I'm going to show you properties of radicals and how to use those properties to solve an example ACT problem. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So what is a radical? You've probably seen these before. Almost looks like a check mark. You know, that's a radical. In this case, it could be the square root. If you have a number in the corner here, this would be third root or fourth root. Now, if you multiply radicals, go ahead, square root of five times square root of five, as long as they're both square, square roots or both third roots or whatever, you can multiply what's underneath the radicals together. So you have square root of five times five or square root of 25. And square root of 25 is five. So remember if you have a square root, something squared, so square root of x squared will equal x. And likewise with the third root, the root of x to the third power is just x. So I need three of them, three of the x's, to come out of the radical and just give me x. Another property, if I have square root of x to the third, I can rewrite that as a fraction. Now, there's basically an invisible two here. If there's nothing there, that means a two, square root. I can rewrite it as x to the three halves power. If it was just square root of x, I can rewrite that as x to the one half power. Now if I look at this a little bit more carefully, so square root of x to the fifth power, so we said x squared, the square root of x squared is x. So for every x squared that comes outside the radical as just a single x. So x to the fifth, we really have x, to the square, x squared times x squared times x. We have, look at the exponents, we have two, two, and one. It adds up to five. So for every two of them, and comes outside the radical. What didn't come out stays underneath the radical. And x times x is x squared. And then the x stays underneath. So x squared times the square root of x. That's another way to write the square root of x to the fifth power. All right, so if you see this problem it says, for all positive values of g and h, which are the following expressions is equivalent to g squared, square root of g to the fifth, times h squared, fourth root of h to the fifth power. So we said before, you know, the square root of x to the fifth is equivalent to x squared times the square root of x. So here we have g to the fifth, so it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna bring down the g squared. And when I take the square root of g to the fifth, that gives me another g squared, square root of g. Now over here with the h is, I have h, fourth root of h to the fifth power. And I can rewrite that as h to the fourth, times h to the first power. So for every four h's that comes outside, the radical is one. So I'll bring down the original h squared, and then it's gonna be times h, and the square root, or sorry, the fourth root of h. So we're here, g squared times g squared is to the fourth power, okay, square root of g. Now we get times 
Okay, h squared and h gives you h to the third power. And then fourth root of h. Now if I look at my answer choices, I have you know fifth root, a fourth root, square root, and last one has nothing on it. So here I got a square root and a fourth root, so somehow I need to combine both of those. So remember if I have square root of g, I can rewrite that as an exponent, g to the one half power. And the number on the bottom gives me what root it is, second root or square root. If I want to change that to a fourth root, I can make it two over four. It's the same as one half. Two fourths is the same as one half. Or that's going to be written as the fourth root of g squared. So let's rewrite it using that. So g to the fourth power times the fourth root of g squared times h to the third power times the fourth root of h. If we have the same radical fourth root, we can combine those into one and multiplying what's underneath the radicals together. So I bring down the g to the fourth, the h to the third, and then the fourth root, g to the second, and h. So those two can be multiplied together. I plug up my answer choices to see which one matches that. Looks like it's going to be c. g to fourth, h to the third, fourth root of g squared h. So here we got to use several properties, you know, changing uh, the root into a fraction, multiplying radicals together, and taking the second or even the third or fourth root of a letter.